Hi, Achim from Inner Space Explorers. Today I wanted to go through some fan mail. Um, it's pretty new to me, but uh, a couple of weeks ago actually I started to receive mail from people saying thank you and sending me stuff, which is uh, super nice and obviously always a little bit like Christmas, so I wanted to share that with you. So first of all, I think I showed that in, a, in another video, but I didn't have the, uh, the name of the guy, so Rick actually sent me this super awesome t-shirt. Uh, so if I showed it before, sorry for that, but that was awesome. And uh, I really appreciate the time and effort it took you to make this and send it to me. And uh, yeah, thanks again. It's, uh, it's awesome. And then uh, I got some letters. So here's one from Poland. Uh, let's have a look what's all of this. Dear Achim, uh, yeah, um, I can't show you that, sorry, um, <laughs> but there's hope even for old people like me, but um, what was the name? Katarina, thank you very much for your, <laughs> for your letter and your picture. Um, Remember, I'm a married man, so <laughs> as much as I appreciate it, um, yeah, let's go. Let's go to something else. So this is from France. There's something in here. Okay. Dear Achim, I am following your videos and posting for several years and wanted to say thank you. Not only did you open an entire new world for me, but you made me the... F Sorry. Um, open an entire new world for me, but you made my diving so much safer and more fun. I ran into a leaking gas scenario last year in a cave dive and my ISE cave training allowed me to handle the incident calm and controlled and me and my body exited the cave safely. I realize you are a watch guy and seem to enjoy dive watches, so I hope you enjoy this little gift. An anchor dive watch from the 70s, actually I think it's of German origin and even the right color. Hope you are safe and healthy and I get a chance to meet you in person one day and maybe even dive with you. Best regards from the sunny south of France, Marcel. Ua! Christmas! Wow, that is indeed super nice, if you see that. So Marcel, thank you very much. Um, indeed, yeah, you're right, I am actually very much into um, vintage dive watches and uh, this one I haven't um, so far, so that's awesome. Thank you very, very much. I'll uh, put that in my collection and uh, enjoy wearing this from time to time. Yeah, works perfect. Thank you very much. So, um, that was it with the fan mail today. Um, always happy if you guys think of me. Um, you probably saw the link in the description. If you want to send me something, there's an address. And now let's go on um, with the topic. So, let's talk about flushing rebreathers. Why would I flush a rebreather and what does that mean? So, generally speaking, it means you take the gas out of the loop and replace it by different gas. Let's put it like that, as simple. And um, so, why would I want to do that? So, for example, on a CCR, it could be to check your oxygen sensors. So you have a reading, um, or a couple of readings, depending on how many oxygen sensors you have, and you want to verify which one is the correct one because they differ in, in what they show. So um, you know your, your depth, let's say you're at 30 meters, so that's four bars, and your diluent is air. So 
you take all the gas out of your lungs, you exhale through your nose till everything's empty, and then you flush the rebreather with diluent. So now you know you, there's air in your, in your system. So air is 21% oxygen times four, four bars. So now you know what the reading of your oxygen sensor should be and you can verify which one is the correct or if there's a correct one or whatever. That could be a reason to flush your rebreather. Another one could be, you know your PO2 is too high, for example. So you get the high oxygen content gas out of the lung, you exhale through the nose and you flush it with diluent to lower the PO2 would be another example. So when I talk flushing rebreathers, when it comes to oxygen rebreathers, then obviously we talk about the start of the dive. And there's two ways of, of looking at it. So generally speaking, when people talk about flushing an oxygen rebreather to start the oxygen rebreather for the dive, then you want to make sure you know what's in the loop, in that case, oxygen. So the general recommendation, and that's what you read when, when, when you search for that topic most of the time is you exhale through your nose, you inhale through your mouth, you exhale through your nose, you inhale through your mouth. You do this three times, you flush the rebreather, or you flush the rebreather then, you start your dive. The thing is, um, does that ensure that you have only 100% oxygen in the system? The simple answer is no, it doesn't. And it takes quite a bit of gas from your very limited gas resources. So I do not recommend that. Where does this come from? It obviously comes from the military and there it also makes a lot of sense because if you have 100% oxygen in the system and you descend, the increasing water pressure um, actually shrinks the total volume, which means you have to add more gas, which again is 100% oxygen, then it limits your depth definitely to six meters because it is 100% oxygen. And that's most probably not what you want if you are on a military mission, probably in wartime, whatever. So you wanna be able to go a little bit deeper. So if there's a little bit of air left in this mixture and you're probably only 60, 70% or something, it's way more safe to go deeper. This is the main reason why these rebreathers are flushed in that way. So now, when we talk about recreational diving with an oxygen rebreather like what we teach, then I want to be sure that I'm as close to a certain number as possible. A certain number for me is 100% oxygen. I want to know I start my dive and I know I have pure oxygen in my system which gives me a limit of six meters, boom, no problem. And obviously I want to use the smallest amount of oxygen out of my supply to achieve this. So the way we flush it and the way I teach it is different. So what I recommend is you vacuumize the rebreather, which means you inhale through the mouth, you exhale through the nose, till it's really vacuumized and then you close your DSV, your mouthpiece. So that means the, the rebreather is empty. There's nothing in there, obviously no gas, so obviously also not the wrong gas. The second thing is you exhale as much as you can. We all still talk on the surface, right, before we start the dive. So you're standing in the water, you're on the surface, and um, or you're sitting on the boat, doesn't matter, but you're before the dive. So now you exhale all the gas from, from your lungs as much as you can, which means you vacuumized your inner system, your lungs, your, your breathing ways. So now that means that the entire system consisting out of yourself, your breathing ways, and your rebreather is completely empty. I mean, obviously it's not completely empty just to prevent all these comments there is the remaining volume in the lungs, so they do not collapse, etc., etc., etc. But that, that's not the point here. So as much gas as you can vent, you got out of the system. 
So now you open your DSV. I mean, you try to inhale, obviously you can't because there's nothing in the rebreather. So now you start manually adding gas while you inhale till you have a full comfortable breath. And then you stop. And that's the perfect situation to start the dive. You have the volume you need for a proper breathing cycle and you know it's only 100% oxygen, nothing else. And it took you only this one breath from your supply. So now when you go down, you obviously add more oxygen because you have to compensate for uh, compensate the volume for the increased pressure. And depending on which rebreather you dive, you probably need it for your buoyancy control as well. In the one that I just showed where the compensated trigger ray, you don't have that issue. And then you start your dive. And now you obviously, and this goes too far for the video because this is part of the, of the course, you have to be aware that over the course of the dive, obviously the PO2 content in your uh, in the system will get lower, and then theoretically you could also go a little bit deeper, etc., etc., etc. But that's not the point. I just wanted to clearly point out how you flush an oxygen rebreather in the beginning, or how we flush an oxygen rebreather in the beginning of the dive, compared to what's normally taught, what what you can read, what's uh, what's done there. So I hope that answers um, some of these questions and um, yeah, if there's more, please put it in the comment section, drop me a message, whatever.